but uh, when I hook up a crawler, I take number twos or number ones. These are number twos. The next thing would be the weight. So I caught this last fish at 65 feet. So now I want to be able to reproduce what I was doing when I caught that fish. And then we're using a no roll slip sinker, three ounce, and we're using number seven circle hook and chunk of cut bait, and it's that simple. I like this fish's moxie. Yeah. He's got some pluck. What is he got? Pluck and moxie. I like that. The one really interesting thing with a Nico rig is the placement of your, your O-ring and your hook in relation to the weight. Got him. Oh, yeah. Look at that. That was cool. And start to move like this, and he goes, huh, <laughs> there's something nibbling on my Nico. <laughs> Welcome to Angling Buzz presented by Fleet Farm. I'm Troy Linder. On today's show, we're gonna be talking about hook, line, and sinker. Now at first it may seem pretty basic, but actually there's more options for rigging than ever before. On today's show, we're joined by James Linder, and he's gonna really expand on this important subject. No question about that. It's really sort of interesting when you think of the classic hook, line, and sinker. Many of you would probably think of either two different rigs, either a Lindy rig, which is a classic walleye fishing system, or a three-way rig, which is a lot of times used for walleyes and even for catfish. In recent years, there's a couple of different uh, really sort of interesting hook, line, and sinkers that have become really popular and is extraordinarily effective. Uh, one of them I have right here, which is probably one of the newest one, and it's become really popular in bass fishing, and it's called the Tokyo rig. The Tokyo rig is simply a hook, a barrel swivel, that hooks to a small wire shaft, you have lead on it, and then you can apply your plastic on here. It was initially designed to penetrate heavy cover for bass fishing, where you can take this, and it, as it drops into the cover, it goes straight up and down. Recently, more and more people have been using this for deep water fishing situations. This particular bait, you can cast it out in 12 to 15 foot of water and reel it slowly on the bottom, and it sort of ricochets off the bottom. And I'm, I can almost guarantee you in the next couple of years, more and more walleye anglers and other anglers are gonna use this rig for alternate fishing situations. The next rig I wanna show you is one that's really, again, it's also a multi-species uh, presentation. Again, a hook, line, and sinker. And it's called the drop shot rig. The drop shot rig, again, it was actually designed initially for bass, a finesse ba bass fishing technique. In recent years, we've been using this exact same thing, the, the uh, hook, which is, is this is a small a VMC Nico hook with a small soft plastic leech on there, a polymer knot, a one foot leader that goes to a sinker. So what happens is I throw this out on the bottom and it, you can see it actually positions my bait about 12 inches off the bottom. We use this for walleyes. We can use this for panfish. I mean, it's a fabulously effective technique, hook, line, and sinker that can be applied to a wide variety of different fishing situ situations. Yeah, rigs have really come a long way in recent years, and it's amazing how creative anglers have been to build a better mousetrap. Now, James, how about line? There's three major categories, fluorocarbon, monofilament, and braid. But between those, there are subtleties. No question about it. You know, line is one of those things that it's sort of preference based on experience with it and confidence that it functions. That's the biggest thing. But let's first start out talking about braid. Some of you have, have probably have braided line if you fish at all, and there's some very specific reasons to use it. Number one, it's abrasion resistant. Number two, sensitivity, feel, unquestionably. Obviously, there's a drawback to that in the fact that a lot of people, it's more expensive. I'll share with you at least at least my confidence in usage of a couple of different type of braided lines. I use them and why I use them, probably more so than anything. The first line I want to talk about is 832 braid. This is a eight pound test and I use this a lot of, on a lot of my walleye and bass fishing situations on spinning rods. It's extraordinarily sensitive. It's very, very narrow diameter. So what I can do is make a long, long cast. And then not only that, the durability, no question about that. The next type of braid I really use a lot, particularly for musky fishing, and it's performance braid. Performance braid is a six carrier braid. One thing I can tell you about this stuff, this stuff is tough. The thing is, is, a lot of times what I'm doing is casting really heavy baits and what you need is extreme tensile strength. 
tensile strength is you're putting a lot of shock or impact into the line. And for musky fishing, that's a critical aspect to be able to maintain the integrity of casting large lures over an extended period of time. Uh, the last type of braided line that I want to talk about is something called nano braid. And this stuff is really intriguing and it's got a really tight weave and it's particularly effective on really light line fishing situations. And what I'm talking about is for fishing for panfish. A lot of pan fishermen consider this revolutionary in the fact that you can cast a really lightweight bait a long way. Uh, I know that a lot of guys are really sold with this and actually I'm sold with it because you'll notice I have it also on my panfish rods here. It seems like we could talk all day just online. It is important to have different options, not only in braid, but also fluorocarbon and monofilament. Now, when it comes to hooks, this is a big category. And today, James, it pretty much seems like there's a hook for every technique out there. One of the biggest thing I'd say about hooks, if I see one thing that people do wrong, is they use too big of a hook with too light a line. The biggest thing is to match your line weight with the size of the hook you're fishing. Yes, it's very important, yeah, to match that line to the technique, to your hook. Now we're gonna switch gears here to sinkers, and a big topic here is lead versus tungsten. Tungsten has really become popular, the reason being it's a smaller diameter but more weight. And it's an amazing thing because you take and you match fluorocarbon and braid with these tungsten weight, your feel is incredible. You say hooks, lines, and sinkers, it's a relatively simple topic. It's not really a very simple topic because it's sort of complex and it's a big part of angling today. Thanks, James, for that awesome information. Uh, stay with us. We have a short commercial break. When we come back, more angling buzz. Want to learn how to catch more and bigger fish? Well, we've got the place for you. Introducing the Fish Head Video Library. Now you can enjoy hour after hour of educational videos right on your phone, tablet, laptop, desktop, or even stream videos right to your TV. Largemouth, smallmouth, walleye, catfish, musky, pike and panfish, open water or on the ice. Check out Fish Head TV to rent, buy, or become a Fish Head member today. Like many of you, I've had back issues. From the pounding waves of Lake Erie. To over 30 years of competitive angling. And a lifetime on the water, but not anymore. Smooth moves change the game. It's a must have for me and my clients. It's like my boat is floating on air. They're easy to install. Fully adjustable. It makes a day on the water a whole lot more comfortable. Smooth your ride with smooth moves. Sportfish Michigan is your number one source for top charter captains and fishing guides in Michigan. Our network of professionals are full-time anglers with years of experience providing customers with the best possible fishing trip services. Fish for trout, salmon, steelhead on Lake Michigan or its famous tributary rivers, the Traverse City area's world-class smallmouth bass, walleye fishing on the Detroit River and Saginaw Bay or Northern Michigan spectacular ice fishing. We do it all. Sportfish Michigan. Get out. Get bit. You can't choose the weather, but you can choose outerwear that works. Technical apparel. Rain gear. Soft shells. Sunwear. When you need to stay comfortable all day, choose Blackfish, because you can't choose the weather. Marine Pro, new from the makers of Seafoam Motor Treatment. Marine Pro is a complete marine fuel system treatment for all types of marine engines. Just pour it in. When added to boat fuel, Marine Pro works to clean and lubricate critical engine areas, stabilize stored fuel up to two years, and help protect the entire fuel system from bad fuel and corrosion. Help your marine engine run smoother and last longer with Seafoam Marine Pro. Available now at Fleet Farm. Welcome back to Angling Buzz. Coming up next is our Timely Topics feature, and today we're going catfishing.
Got him. Got him. There he got him. There he got him. Gramps has got him. Carter. Carter, buddy, get the net. Get the, get the net, buddy, net quick. Gramps has got one on. Wow, I don't know if I can handle him the big all the way. Carter, you're going to have to net him upstream. And what I mean by that is you don't net him that way. You want to net him this, this like this because he, you want Gramps to get the fish in front of us and so it goes back into the net. Okay, there you go. So this is like hockey school. See? Oh, there, there you go. Okay, got now him. you get him. Now, now I bring him aboard. Come oh. on. <laughs> Come on. That was a workout. Wow. Yeah, right. Gramps got the first one. I'll, I'll, wow. I'll, I'll, we'll get that one out of there. There we go. One time you could just touch one of these. These things. barbels. That's how they taste in the water. They got those long like those barbels. Things. Those are taste buds, actually. Those are covered with taste buds, and that's how that's they find the bait. That's how they find the bait. That's, that's find the bait. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're getting them back in the water. Net man and, and, and fish man, high five. You know, there's a lot of different hooks you can use for catfishing. One of my favorites is this octopus. It's a VMC octopus hook. And we use this in a variety of different sizes, everything from two to about a five aught, depending on the catfish we're fishing for. But one thing that's always really important when you're tying this heavy line on, this is 25 pound test uh, Suffolk Siege in bright orange. But what I always do is leave a really long tag on there. You know, catfish aren't all that uh, really delicate and they don't care about that. But the thing is when you tie this heavy line on, a lot of times it'll have the tendency to slip. So you'll notice that I leave a pretty long tag on there just in case when you start putting a lot of pressure on them. Sometimes when you're pulling them out of these log jams, you really have to lean on them. The other thing, I have 65 pound, this is performance braid line. And the one thing that's really interesting is the weight of the sinkers we're fishing. We're only fishing in three to five foot of water, but we're fishing with three ounce sinkers, sometimes even heavier than that. The biggest reason you're using this heavy sinker is once we cast it out, we want it to lock in that position in front of a log jam, in front of right now we're fishing in front of a like a big subsurface log pile you can't see it you can see one little stob there but there's a bunch of wood underneath there but once you cast it out you want this to pin to the bottom and keep its position so it's not sliding around the other thing that's really important you'll notice right now when we're fishing wood like this we're fishing with a relatively short leader the reason for that is if you have a longer leader it has a tendency to move around a lot more and you have the tendency to get hung up. So a lot of times when we're log jam fishing, we're fishing with a short lead. All right. In case you're wondering about that wood out there, those are old railroad trestles. I don't know how old, could be 100 years old. A lot of times what we do is more or less just set up in a fixed location, put out some lines, and you more or less wait for the fish to come to you, you know, which is sort of fun. So it's relatively simple. You can catch some really pretty big ones up in this section of the Mississippi River. Big ones are like, you know, 8 to 10 pounds, 12 pounds. But we have oodles and oodles of like 3 to 6s. Ooh, that's a biggie. <laughs> These boys are really tough customers. They really are, aren't they? Oh, wait. You could see the way that fish was pulling. No question about it. What a gorgeous fish, though. Yeah, catfish are really great to catch this time of year. They're a hard-fighting fish and a lot of fun to catch. And stay with us. We have a short commercial break. When we come back, the first of our BuzzBite reports. Stay with us. From the kennel to the coop, whatever the season, Fleet Farm has everything to keep your animals happy and healthy. Whether it's keeping the backyard birds well-fed season, mastering those retrieval skills season, or wondering who takes care of who season, there's a reason people say if Fleet Farm doesn't have it, you don't need it, because we have it all. Fleet Farm, built for real life. Customer first, that's their mission at Don DeLinger Auto. It's not just about the sale, it's about giving you peace of mind for as long as you own that vehicle. Don DeLinger is home to the lifetime powertrain warranty for new and pre-owned vehicles, plus 10 years of roadside assistance. They have an incredible variety of the most popular vehicles and offer pickup and drop off for service. Stop in to experience the Don DeLinger difference today. Yeah. <laughs> 
Lake Vermilion. Explore. Relax. Reconnect. Minnesota's most beautiful lake. Oh. Get hooked on our trophy wall. That's a beauty. Bass. This is my favorite fish. Musky fish. That's a beauty. There. Things to do? You'll never get bored. Rooms with a view? We got them. Lake Vermilion. Four seasons of fun. Because boaters know and follow Minnesota's aquatic invasive species laws, 98% of lakes are not known to have any zebra mussels. 95% are not known to have any kind of invasive animals or plants. Let's keep it this way. Clean aquatic plants and animals from boats, trailers, and equipment. Drain all water from watercraft, including the motor, and keep drain plugs out during transport. Dispose of unused bait properly. Together, we're preventing the spread of aquatic invasive species in Minnesota. Welcome back to Angling Buzz. For our first report, we're gonna check in with the Leisure Outdoors guys on Leech Lake. Hey, it's Toby Kabalibug with Leisure Outdoor Adventures. I'm with some clients. I got Brian, Brian, Darren, right there. We're heading out on Leech Lake. We've been fishing it pretty hard for the last couple of days. Here's the story with Leech Lake. Right now, the walleyes are biting. Artificials are fast, for sure. Crankbaits and uh, jigging wraps have been working well. Live bait still works, too. And we've been doing a lot of musky fishing. So the water temps are in that uh, mid to upper 70s. Uh, the walleyes are biting in the morning. You know, they're not all biting, a lot of food in the lake. So anything you can fish fast, whether it be crankbaits or jig wraps, um, some live bait too, if you can get on them, a bobbers and leech, or the old Lindy rig will work too. But uh, artificial stuff, fish fast, plastics, jigging wraps, and uh, crankbaits. And the muskets are biting too. These guys uh, put three in the boat yesterday, so pretty awesome. It's been, it's been a lot of fun up here in Leech Lake. The bite's good, and uh, the weather's been stable, so Leech Lake is on fire. That's it. Thanks, Toby. Now for our next report, let's check in with Billy Rosner on Lake Vermilion. As we head into mid-August, your best bet for walleyes on Vermilion is gonna be trusting your electronics. On my Helix 10, I run the Lake Master card in there. I follow my contours. I might run side imaging. In areas, find where those transitions are, you know, like rock, rubble to sand or mud, and that's really key on Vermilion. And don't get hung up on depths too much. In one bay, they might be biting at 16 foot on a transition. The next bay over, they might be biting 22 to 24 feet on a transition. For bait, live bait rigs with a half a crawler are good. And also don't forget your big minnows. If you can find those big creek chubs, uh, those are working very well too. Cover water, you can lead core troll in areas, find some fish and uh, jig wrap them, rip wrap them or uh, jig in a half a crawler, jig in a minnow in those areas and really work them over. Uh, this be versatile in August and you should get into a pretty good walleye bite up here in the way. For our last report, let's check in with Captain Ron Dome in Michigan. Right now, this evening, we're out on Lake Michigan controlling King Salmon. We've had a really good push recently. Frankfurt, Glen Arbor, and Leland are all seeing increased numbers of, of, of King Salmon. Right now, you know, some boats going out of those ports are seeing catches anywhere from three to seven a trip. Varying though, you know, if you aren't committing to fishing all salmon, you may not even get a bite. You know, you're really having to throw your entire spread all targeted towards salmon, or salmon speed the entire trip. And you know, those guys that are willing to do that are being rewarded most days with three to seven hookups, sometimes more each day, each evening, morning trip. Right now we're fishing that thermocline again. You can see it developing really good here. You can see just below it, my lower cannonball. Just above it, my upper cannonball. And you can see my speed and temp down there. My cannonball is down 66 feet. We're going, you know, we're in 51 degree water. We're going about two, three right now. The big thing that I've noticed this evening in the last few days is there's pockets of, of current and warmer water mixed in here. We've had a lot of north wind recently, and that's really stirred up our water. You know, a lot of our bites are coming as soon as we find that temperature change. You know, we're not changing depth, we're not changing speed, but we're hitting an area, a zone that has, you know, different water, we call it. And that water may have a current going a different way. It may have warmer water down deeper or colder water up higher. And those fish are pushing those LYs up in that area. And it's a great way to target these fish this time of year while they're putting out the feed bag.
Some lodges are just a cut above. Hawk Lake is one of those. They're the only Orvis-endorsed lodge in all of Ontario, and they're the four-time finalists for the best Orvis Lodge in all of North America. They feature Cordon Blue trained chefs and offer some of the best freshwater fishing in the world. You can target trophy walleye, smallmouth bass, pike and lake trout on any of their 19 private lakes. Whether you fish with traditional gear or love fly fishing, Hawk Lake has you covered. On the lake, in the woods, or on the ice, keep powered up with Bold North Outdoors portable power stations. Our rugged multi-service power station is marine grade, weatherproof and powered by long-lasting lithium phosphate batteries. Charge cell phones, tablets and GoPros, or power fans, lights, fish finders, underwater cameras and more. Recharge anywhere with our solar panel charger. Wherever your adventure takes you, you'll have current to be connected with Bold North portable power stations. Looking for the perfect fishing vacation? Leech Lake, Minnesota. There's over 112,000 acres of water to explore with fantastic walleye, bass, pike, panfish, and trophy muskies. The fishing opportunities are endless. Leech Lake has it all with over 30 resorts, lodges, campgrounds, and hotels line its pristine shores. Plan your trip. It's Minnesota's original up north vacation destination. And now it's time for our cool products brought to you by Fleet Farm. We're going to start out with the Slick Stick Bottom Bouncer. It has a quick change system on the top, a little quick snap in here to change this out. You can see it's a little bit different than a traditional bottom bouncer, which would be something more like this Rock Runner from Northland Tackle. And it's good to have a little variety of different uh, um, weights when you are trolling. Also from Northern Tackle, the Rock Runner. You see a little bit shorter arm on this. Slick Stick has the longest arm. This is the shortest of them all, but this also has that kind of quick change system on there so you can easily snap on the weights, snap off the weights. And you can buy those quick, the, the quick snaps actually by themselves right here. And for specific configurations and combinations on your rigs, you can have um, you know, blade fish image, these are holographic image blades, Indiana blades, Colorado blades, also butterfly blades. And then to change out the blades here is speed clevis, this is to quickly change out the blades and change out the colors. And what's nice about all these, you can kind of mix and match them and, and kind of play around and create your own rig. From VMC, they have a, a wide variety of terminal tackle here and the split ring, different swivels. This is really nice, this is just a, a dual snap lock. This is great, if you're crankbait fishing, you can quickly change crankbaits to different depths uh, and different actions without having to retie your line. A really nice thing to have, definitely you want that in your tackle box. Also from VMC, the Tokyo Rig. This has come on really strong in the bass world, great for fishing around heavy cover and weeds. You see it's a, a unique design in this. You put the weight in there and then you put your soft plastic on the top of that and it really punches through and works through weeds uh, incredibly well. This has been a really highly effective at the top levels of bass, fish, bass fishing in the tournament scene, the Tokyo Rig from VMC. Also from VMC, the spin shot. Now this is, uh, you know, primarily, you know, kind of started out as a bass rig, but if you have a, 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 the lighter hook, like a number four hook, you can put live bait on this for panfish, bluegill, and crappie. This works really well. And the problem with drop shot is the line twist. This eliminates that problem of line twist with the spin shot rig from VMC. For tackle storage solutions, Plano, the Plano Edge. I'm gonna flip this open. This is waterproof, watertight. You can see it's kind of a unique design in the interior here. This is for small crankbait storage to keep them, uh, keep them separated, easily pull them out, easily store them. And a couple different options here in the Plano Edge series. They got a, a, a kind of a standard box here, all around box, and then they had a bladed jig and a jig box. These are rust proof, dry lock seal, and a water wicking system from Plano, the Edge series. 
For waders, this is the Compass 360 Rogue, 100% waterproof. You have a nice tread on the bottom. This is great if you're wading in rivers and streams. A lot of times throughout the whole season, the water's pretty cold, so this is a, a really good thing to have. You fish rivers and streams, and also if you hunt, you can use this you know, into the fall uh, when you're hunting as well. From Compass 360, the Rogue. And for a combination, there's a lot of different options in Fleet Farm for the beginning angler. This is a, a, a great one, a spinning reel with an anti-reverse. This is from 13 Fishing, the Ambition uh, combination. This is a, a ultra light model, so this would be great for trout fishing and pan fishing. You could probably get away with even some bass on here. But for the beginning angler, this is a great combination from 13 Fishing, the Ambition combo. All these products are available online at fleetfarm.com and also your local Fleet Farm store. And right now it's time for our Technique of the Week. So basically what we're doing today is a, it's a real simple setup. Um, I have a 6 foot 8 medium fast action rod, a big caster reel just with the auto flip so I can easily let out more line if we're fishing deeper water. And a, a no stretch stealth 17 pound braid and a six pound uh, monofilament uh, leader. And you know, the rig is really simple. Um, I have a wing it bottom bouncer. You can change your weights just by pulling this thing off the rubber tube. And you're gonna run, you know, uh, about a 24 to 30 inch snell with a small wide gap hook and a spin and glow floater, which, look at these floaters, it gets, uh, keeps your bait off the rocks. It's really simple to, you know, for anybody to take this, uh, this technique, especially with young kids. You know, pretty much all you have to do is just drag it over the bottom. You're not gonna get snagged up, hooked up and uh, you're going to be dragging your bait right in, right in front of the fish's face. So it's been working really well for us today, so I love it. We've been marking some fish here and I've dropped three, four waypoints just to keep track of them. And we had been going in one direction up into the wind, drift back a bit with the wind, just maintaining the speed that we had wanted. And uh, we marked about three, four fish and we just had some light pickups and uh, they were gone. So. I always like to change the angle of my uh, approach to them. I can't say which direction these fish are going 100%, but by changing it 90 degrees, are they taking the opportunity that they don't have as much time to react to the bait when it's going across their vision, instead of if they're tracking it going with them or into their face. And, and uh, well, that's exactly it too, because as soon as, as soon as you change the angle, we popped two fish in the first pass, so yeah. so obviously right now that's obviously that, that presentation right now is is changing that bite right now because they're not even pecking at them right now. They're actually taking these, these baits right away. So yeah, they're whacking it. Yep. Eat now or let it go by. You know, it's paid off for us today. Just watching our electronics and uh, changing up the angles on the fish, going hitting them from different directions and forcing them sort of to bite, to not pass up that bait going past their nose, eh? This is what you get, a little bit of Lake of the Woods gold. Looks beautiful, great fish. Yeah, he's a nice fish. Yeah, late summer, pulling those rigs for walleye can be really, really effective. On next week's show, we're gonna be going up to Canada for a Canadian fishing adventure. And as always, we wanna help remind you to stop the spread of aquatic invasive species. Anytime you're leaving any body of water, clean, drain, and dry. And thank you for joining us this week. I'm Troy Linder, and we'll see you next time. Want to learn how to catch more oh, and bigger me, fish like <laughs> largemouth and smallmouth bass? Or maybe you want to learn how to catch big walleye, monster catfish, or giant panfish all year round. Well, we got the place for you. Introducing the Fishhead Video Library. Now you can enjoy hour after hour of educational videos right on your phone, tablet, laptop, desktop, or even stream videos right to your TV. Is bass fishing your gig? We'll teach you everything you need to know about catching more largemouth and smallmouth bass. Or maybe you want to learn how to catch panfish like crappies and giant bluegills. Yep, we got you covered. After watching our panfish videos, you'll know when, where and how to catch panfish no matter what the season. Check out Fishhead TV to rent, buy, or become a Fishhead member today.